In this video lesson, and the next one of the series, you will learn how to write Python programs that work with text files. This video covers reading data from a text file into a Python program. The next video covers writing data from a program into a text file. Being able to write and read data to and from an external file is very useful if you're creating an application that needs to save data for later. For example, you might be making an application that allows the user to input details of a shopping order, and these need to be saved for processing at a later date. Or you might be making a game and you need to save high scores in some kind of a leaderboard. Whatever the application, being able to persist data when the application is not in use is an important technique to learn. I'm going to begin by showing you how to read from a text file into a Python program. I'm going to create the text file using a very simple application which you can find on most Windows computers called Notepad. And now I'm going to save the file with a name. People.txt. I've already created a folder on my D drive called Delmi. I will need to know the name and the location of the file if I'm going to open it with Python. Now I can close Notepad. I'll start by writing some code to open the file and read everything from it at once. Let's run it and see what happens, and then I'll explain what this code is doing. You can see I've output everything from the file. The first line of code will open the text file. When the program opens the file, you don't see the text yet. It's actually copied into the computer's random access memory. So it's open, but it's invisible to the person running your program. F is a special variable called a file handle. I've used F for file, but any legal variable name will do. From now on in the program, I can refer to the file data as F. The second line of code makes use of the read command to copy the entire contents of the file into a variable called my variable. It doesn't really matter what this variable is called. Perhaps a better name for the variable would be my people or people from file. Any sensible variable name will do. The third line of code outputs the contents of the variable called my variable. And the fourth line of code closes the file. This will free up the memory that the file data is occupying. It's important to close a file when it's no longer needed because another program might want to open it. It's good practice to close a file as soon as possible. So this would work fine. The data we need are in the variable called my variable, so we can close the file before we print the data. You could also do this instead. The data from the read command is being fed directly to the print command. I don't need another variable if this is all I want to do. Now let's see how we can read a few characters at a time from a text file. I'm going to replace the read instruction with this. Watch what happens now. I'm simply outputting the first three characters of the file. If I want to output the first 20 characters of the file, I can do this. Perhaps I want to prompt the user for the number of characters that they want to output. I can do this. It's important to realise that the input command captures a string, so I then need to convert that into an integer. I've nested my call to the input function inside the int function. 
there's the first 30 characters of the file. By the way, any spaces inside the file count as characters too. So the space between Kevin and Drum is a character. The space between Mervyn and Drake is a character. Let me show you something else which will give you an insight into the way the read command actually works. The first print command outputs the first three characters in the file. The second print command picks up from where it left off. Although the open file is invisible, you should imagine that there is a cursor inside the file and it's positioned at the start of the first line immediately after the file has been opened. When your program reads a character, the cursor is advanced to a position just in front of the next character. When the second character is read, the cursor is advanced to the third character, and so on. Having read the first three characters, the invisible cursor is now positioned in readiness to read from the fourth character. Each print command in this program will therefore pick up from where the last print command left off. I recommend that you pause the video now and play around with these commands before you move on. Now, let's see how to read a line of text from a file. It couldn't be easier. I'm using the read line command. That's the first line of the text file. If I want to read multiple lines from the text file, I can do this. I'm copying and pasting my code just to speed things up. Although the open file is invisible, you should imagine that there is a cursor inside the file and it's positioned at the start of the first line, immediately after the file has been opened. When your program reads a whole line of text, the cursor is advanced to the start of the second line. When the second line is read, the cursor is advanced to the third line, and so on. I can also read all of the lines of text in the file, one at a time, using a loop, like this. This program will open the file, then, using the while loop, it will read each line of text in the file, one at a time, into the variable called x. It doesn't matter what name is given to this variable. Each time a line of text is read, the variable is tested to see if the line actually contained any text. If the line doesn't contain any text, the program has reached the end of the file, so the break command causes the loop to end. If the line does contain text, the text is output and the loop begins again. Eventually, when the loop ends, the file is closed. By the way, if you're not familiar with it, this command here is short for while true equals true. Well, true always equals true. So if we didn't have a break command, this would be an infinite loop. The assumption is that the file doesn't go on forever. I can also use a for loop to do the same thing, like this. Let's get a fresh shell window, it's starting to get a bit busy. The output is exactly the same, but you can see the code I've written is a lot more compact. This program will open the file, then using the for loop it will read each line of text into the variable one at a time and output the text on that line. When the loop ends, the file is closed. Notice that when you're using this technique, there is no need for a read line command. This is easier to type up than using a while loop, but perhaps what is actually going on is not as clear. As I said before, the variable x in this program is used to read one line of text at a time from the text file, and it doesn't matter what the name of this variable is. Perhaps it makes more sense to do this. I've called the variable line because it stores a line of text. There's one more thing I'd like to show you, and that's how to search a text file for a line containing some particular text. For each line in the file, if Billy 
is in the line, then print the line. Well, the file doesn't contain Billy, so there's no output. But Lamar is in the file, so there's the line containing Hedy Lamar. There are a few extra things that you could try yourself. For example, why not edit your text file with Notepad so that it includes two different people with the same first name? Save your text file and close Notepad when you've done this. Then test your program to see if it finds both of these people. You could modify your program to stop searching when it finds the person it's looking for. Don't forget the break command. You could also modify your program to prompt the user for the first name of the person they want to find, then output the full name if they're in the file. Otherwise, output a message saying that the person cannot be found. In the next video, I'll show you how to create a program that can write data into a text file.